So there's a few things that kind of turn me off when it comes to a photography YouTube channel. Number one, any channel that says ISO as a word, I immediately turn that off. Number two, any channel that overuses the word bokeh. I mean, really, if you want to be honest, the word bokeh is just a fancy word used by different people on different channels trying to make it sound like they know what they're talking about. And the third thing that turns me off when it comes to a photography YouTube channel is any time somebody tries to act like they know what they're talking about when it's very, very clear that they don't know what they're talking about. I mean, just because you got 200 images on Shutterstock and you once shot your cousin's sister's friend's wedding in the backyard doesn't mean that you're a professional photographer. And I don't even care if you've got 1.4 million subscribers. That just means you're good at marketing yourself and fooling the masses. It doesn't mean that you know what you're talking about. So I want to start with a little disclaimer on this video and tell you right now, I am not a video expert. This video is about my first real serious attempt to do a video ad. Now it's not a client oriented thing. I wasn't hired to do it. It's something I'm doing for myself because it's something I'm interested in promoting myself doing, but I don't think I'm quite there yet. So I don't want anybody to watch this video and think that I'm coming across like I'm some kind of video expert showing you how to do it. I'm just going to show you what I did. And I don't want you to think that I'm an expert because that kind of thing just drives me nuts when people act like they know what they're talking about and they don't really know what they're talking about. Now, one thing that I do like when I watch photography YouTube channels is people that go for it. You know, you take a chance, maybe you've never done something before, maybe you've never done a lot of photography, but you're willing to put yourself out there. And as long as you sell yourself as doing that, I'm totally cool with that. So that's why I'm doing this video as well, because I have an interest in doing video advertising. And so I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going for it. So here's my attempt at doing a promotional product video. Okay. So here was my concept. I got a pair of shoes. And if you watch this channel before, you know, I photographed some shoes in the past. I've done that for my portfolio, but this time I thought I'm going to do a video for these shoes. So the very first thing I did was I drew up kind of a little storyboard, if you will. I kind of listed out some, some clips or some images that I thought might look cool. And then I started planning how I was going to get each shot. So the first clip in the final part of it was probably my best clip. I think it's one of the stronger images in the whole thing. I didn't film myself making that clip and I apologize. But in the next clip, I knew I wanted to throw the shoes up in the air and have them slow motion going through the air. Now that was easier said than done because as I was doing it, I was, you know, it was kind of difficult to throw both shoes at the same time and get them to do what you wanted them to do. So I did it many times. And then the other problem that I ran into was I was shooting everything on my Fuji X100. And when I played it back right there in the camera, it doesn't play back in slow motion, even though I was shooting at 60 frames a second, which I believe is the fastest that camera will shoot. So I wasn't seeing it in slow motion as it was playing back, which made it kind of difficult. I ended up shooting it on my iPhone, which does play back in slow motion, much easier to check right then and there. I shot it on the phone as a backup. Wanted to use the Fuji, but shot it on the phone as a backup. So when it comes to slow motion, I'm going to have to uh, figure out a better way to do the playback at the time so that I know if what I got is what I wanted. Now I also feel myself in the, you'll see as I'm stepping away in the shoes, I ended up shooting that twice because the one that I'm showing here of myself filming it, I ended up doing it again. I had a different pair of pants on the second time that I, I, I don't know, I kind of liked it better. And so the one that I'm showing you here didn't make the final cut, but I did that several times where I was walking away, walking away until I got one that I liked. And then I did a couple hero shots to just kind of showing the shoes, doing the light. I, I actually moved the light over as I kind of scan the shoes and you'll see the light kind of change. And once I got all the clips that I thought I could piece together, put them into the computer, 
and started the editing process. Now the final video only ended up being about 12 seconds, so it wasn't a lot of clips. And one of the challenges, I have to tell you, when it comes to commercial photography, there is a lot to the planning and the design and the styling and the setting up of a commercial shoot but it doesn't even remotely compare to setting up a commercial video. There's just so much, you know, to plan. The, the lighting, the shooting, the, the, you know, kind of in your mind, you're thinking I'm gonna transition from this clip to the next clip, and you kind of gotta think about how that's gonna transition, and there's just so much to it. But once I pulled in all the clips that I thought I could use when I started the editing process, I started piecing them together. And the interesting thing to me too that I was gonna say was each little clip is you know, a second, second and a half long, maybe a half a second. You're, you're just using such a small little piece to do, you know, to do these quick little clips to piece the whole thing together. So, so it didn't take me a whole lot of time in the editing process, but I kept weeding it down to just shorter little pieces and getting the order right. And one of the things that I'm finding when it comes to the video process is that editing process. I, I'm really enjoying that editing part of things. And I wish I was better at it. I'm getting better as we go. I'm learning more. But that creative part where you pull the whole thing together is a lot of fun for me. Now, once I got them all together, it looks something like this. When the magic starts to happen, I think, is when you take the video clips they've put together and when you start putting sound effects and music, it all kind of comes together. Now, when it comes to sound effects, in this case, I didn't want to overdo it. I didn't want to get too corny with it. So I got two different sound effects, kind of some swooshing sounds, and I lowered the audio so that they're subtle. But with just the sound effects, it looks like this and sounds like this. Okay, and then the last thing I had to do was pick a song. And I am sure that there is a great art form to picking the right sound effects and picking the right music. I don't claim to have that talent as of yet. I'm getting better. You can spend a lot of time searching, trust me. But I think I found a decent song I don't know if I love loved it, but it was it was decent. I'm gonna play the final thing with all the clips put together, the sound effects, and the music. I think it turned out okay for a first attempt. I got a ways to go. We're gonna get better at this. I really enjoy this, so I'm looking forward to doing more of them. But before I show you the final video, let me say this. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't already, please do. Give me a thumbs up if you would. And if you have any comments about video editing, sound, picking music, I would love to hear your input because I got a ways to go on this and I'm learning, loving it, and I would love to hear your advice. I will see you guys in the next video and I will send you off with this final video. Let me know what you think. Take care, guys.